Hi everyone, it's Throwback Tuesday, which means it's time to throw ourselves back to the good old days where D&D was first spoiled. Now, I want to play with Multi-Threader. It seems like such a good card that people haven't figured out how to work out yet. So, here's what I'm going to do. Since it costs only one influence, I'm going to splash into the Shaper faction. Shaper because it's all very well known for being the big rig faction. And find the three most optimum breakers to use with Multi-Threader. Now, the decoder is no question at all. Study Guide is by far the best choice because you can use Multi-Threader credits to pump Study Guide on turns where you don't run, making your Multi-Threader more efficient. Shrike is my next choice. Shrike usually doesn't have a place in most decks because it's so expensive to install and so expensive to use to break ice. Um, even though the allure of a one, uh, one card kill all sentry breaker is very appealing. Um, the fact that it costs so much is a big deterrent and multi-threader helps offset that. Finally, on barriers, Corroda is a natural choice, but I do not have I mean I do not wish to spend influence on Corroda, so I go with the infection lady instead, which is just all around better. And you have scavenge infection anyway, so why not? I'm going to be going up against Nerf Hub today. And this is going to be a challenging matchup because I don't pack Clot. The reason I don't pack Clot is because with a big rig setup, you don't play Clone Chip. Without Clone Chip, there's not much reason to run Clot. So, in theory, once I have my entire rig setup, which is three multi threaders and those three breakers, I should be able to break through any ice um, without having to pay too much money because multi threader. Alright, so I'm going to check his remote with Dirty Laundry and find that it is a Sense City Grid. Very well, my last click will be a Show Gamble. So I have a pretty good start. I have two Show Gambles and a Lucky Find in my opening hand and a Plus Street to deal with my opponent in case he's running Butcher Shop. So a pretty well-rounded hand, but no SMC, no Breakers, which can be a bit of a trouble if he decides to rush an Astro early. I need to be conscious of that. Uh, an early Dirty Laundry draw allows me to face check another one of his face down cards. It's a Jackson Howard, I trash it. Um, probably the safe move to do until he, I realize that he has two Jacksons on board, which was why he um, was happy for me to trash one. He continues installing horizontally, and I diesel into a lady. So this is a pretty good start, and then I realize that I don't need to pay the three credits for installing lady because I do have a modded in my hand. So of course I take back the lady install, which my opponent gracefully allowed. I install it with modded instead, which makes a lot more sense before running R&D. Now I'm risking an architect res here, I choose to take the risk because I need to play fast against near pub. I need to pressure them into losing credits so that I do not, uh, so that I can avoid the threat of Sand Sand Astro as, uh, um, as much as possible. Yes, I know there's Sand Sand on the board, so I am conscious of the fact that he can do something like this with shipment from Sand Sand. So he went completely broke doing that, but he got his astro out before I got my clot threat out. Notice I don't have a clot, but he doesn't know that. And this basically um, telegraphs to me that he's playing Baltic, astro Baltics with team sponsorship after the access. So I know pretty much exactly where his influence is at. Eli, one or two Ichis or Architects combined, a couple of team sponsorships and two Baltic labels is probably his influence spread, which means firstly I can ditch my plus crit, secondly I need to play really fast because I do not run clot. Um, so the first safe thing to do here is definitely to trash the Sand Sand because now he has enough money to score a bill off it, you do not want your opponent to do that. I will definitely look to trash the pair campaign in the near future, that's one way to keep my opponent down, by making it, by slowing him down making sure that he doesn't have enough money to play Baltic Labour, I increase my odds of uh, challenging him. Meanwhile, I continuously apply R&D pressure, but I'm not turning up any agendas, which is really awful for me. They might be all in his hand. Unfortunately, this deck doesn't run any sort of HQ pressure outside of Escher, which you saw in my opening hand. And Escher just isn't very relevant in this matchup, where ice won't be stacked too deep. Uh, okay, but I do draw into an SMC and I really should have installed that last turn. The SMC is very crucial, allowing me to threaten the clot, which means that I, um, if he top decks an Astro while I'm not R&D locking him, he cannot just score, chain it out and ride to the moon for free. Unfortunately, I did not check his NAPD remote. He very smartly placed an NAPD there, um, knowing that there were two bigger targets for me to run, which was the pet campaign and the Sensor City Grid. That is very good mind games right there. If you didn't if you didn't really catch that, I want you to rewind to the turn after he scored the Astro Script Pilot program on the Sand Sand 
and notice when he installed the pet campaign, the NAPD. That was a very good move on his part. I never checked the NAPD. That's four points swung in his favor. Granted, it was a very suboptimal play by him there because he lost his Baltic labor to do to score the NAPD. It's really an up suboptimal play, and most high level players won't do that. But he got the agenda points. I can't say anything bad about that. Uh, he's now halfway to victory, and I still haven't found a single R and D digging card. Things are not going my way right now, and I uh, encounter a further setback by uh, an R&D run that fizzled once again, even though I've been poking R&D time and time just to deny him a top deck view or astro, I'm not getting any agenda points. I can't do any Hail Mary runs, and I've already used up most of my economy. All that good early game economy in the gambles, the re uh, repeated dirty laundries and lucky finds, they've all run out, and I've chucked my levy as well. So I'm in a lot of trouble here. I decide to go for R&D again, expanding my dog token, and here I encounter into even more trouble, an Ichi. Thank goodness I'm playing Shrike. That allows me to walk through Ichi for 4 credits, but installing it was a pain. It cost me five, another 4 credits. At least I was rewarded for my efforts this time, but what more can I say? Um, I'm down to 5 credits, and I'm out of money, and he trashes my same old thing. So this is where I make a very cru made a very crucial mistake. I should have hoarded the same old thing in my hand, and next turn, uh, the game, the flow would be install prepaid, install same old thing, and perform a gamble so that I can continue locking R and D. Instead, I pre-played the same old thing, figuring that he wouldn't trash it because he was only on one credit. But my opponent rightfully trashed my only same old thing, which means I cannot recur my economy. That severely cripples me. This means that I do not have the funds to break Ichi with Shrek, and that's very bad news. So now he installs something that remote. And I don't think I can contest it right here. If there's a code gate there, I'm stopped dead cold. Remember that I still need to pump up a study guide if I want to get through any code gates. So that's out of the question. I'm going for the safer R&D route instead. Since I've drawn my maker's eye, I can afford to see three cards including an NAPD. Still, if I saw an NAPD. But once again, my R&D digging falls short of expectations and I get nothing for my efforts. I do draw into an R&D interface. R&D interface is very key in this deck and it's a key distinction between prepaid, uh, standard prepaid kit and this deck. Because you are using fixed breakers, you do not really want to see only one card per access and R&D I allows you to get multiple cards per access. This is why I also play modded. Modded is very important because otherwise the tempo hit from installing R&D I is too much to handle. Um, so here I just discard a lot of my resources. There are some questionable resources there granted, but they are mostly meta techs. Uh, hunting Grounds is essential against Toll Booth. I do not want to pay 4 credits per Toll Booth. And um, Ice Cover is there to deal with Architect. Because Shrike needs to pay 4 to get through Architect, which is way too much. Um, Shrike, in con I mean, Ice Cover in conjunction with Net Ready Ice allows me to break a Strength 2 Architect with paying only 2 credits. So it is a janky combo, but it works out that way. Unfortunately for me, my opponent actually sneaks out an NAPD. It was using a biotic, so he's reset his credits, but I still need to maintain R&D lock if I'm going to even have a shot of winning this game. At this point, any breaking news or Bill or Astro in his hand is game. So I can only hope that he has no agendas in hand and just go for the R&D lock at this point. Clicking through the Eli because I'm way too poor to afford breaking the Eli, the Ichi, sorry, at this point. So bringing Shrike out was a mistake because I didn't have the funds to sustain the Shrike. I'm clicking through a, I'm instead of using my Shrike, I'm clicking through the ice instead. So I could have saved those credits used to install Shrike instead. Once again, no agendas. Goodness me, have I been unlucky this game or were they all in HQ? I can I can never tell. I will never know as he scores the final Astro from hand. Of course, I made a lot of misplays this game. Uh, mostly due to inexperience with this deck. That is to be expected. I was also up against a very strong tier 1 deck. Again, my loss was to be expected. So let's review some of the things that I could have done differently. Now, this deck is very reliant on having as many multi threaders out as early as possible, especially in a fast matchup like this, simply because you cannot afford to say I'm clicking through Eli. The whole reason you're, I'm running a big rig is so that I can get through servers once per turn lock his R&D, make sure he doesn't top deck a winning agenda. 
I wasn't able to do that because I only had one multi threaded out by the end of the game, which was completely unacceptable, especially since I saw all three SMCs at some point during the game. What I should have done was to repeatedly install SMCs and use them to tilt up my subsequent multi threaders for two credits apiece. One of the one of the best use of multi-threaders is to fuel study guide of course, when you are not running. The second best use of it is to use SMC, because uh, the pay cost of SMC is exactly 2 credits. So, if I were to install a multi-threader uh, during the corpse turn, while I have 2 multi-threader credits, um, I would essentially be paying 2 credits for a single multi-threader because of Kate's discount, and 1 click for installing the SMC. One click and two credits for multi-threader, which there are so many, which there are so many copies of in my deck because I play three of each SMC and multi-threader, means that I should be able to assemble them very quickly. This is something I did not strive to do and was a mistake of mine. It is because of this interaction that I'm also now considering playing clone chips in this deck. As I said, this deck doesn't need clone chips because I don't run parasite, creatures, or the like. I do not need recursion. Uh, I might change my mind on that and. Since I have a useless ice cover sitting in my deck that is hogging influence, I could change that into a clot instead. Maybe that would make things work out better. My deck composition requires more R&D diggers. There's no escaping that unfortunately. Um, I didn't see an R&D digger for the longest time. The R&D interfaces came way too late. Had I been able to dig through two deep, two cards deep on R&D uh, since uh, from the very, very beginning of the game, that would have changed everything. Unfortunately, um, that wasn't the case, and my runs was. Uh, of suboptimal efficiency. So I'm thinking of including either a third copy of R&D interface or two, the second Maker's Eye. Maker's Eye benefits from uh, prepaid voice pad and R&D interface benefits from modded. There are pros and cons to each one. I might, I'll probably end up going with the third R&D interface due to smoothening out the consistency of um, getting two R&D eyes out. Generally in most games you do not need the third R&D eye, but sometimes you will be flooded with RDIs and it's fine to chuck one and install the other two. I think that's the route I'm going to go down. What do you think about this? The third RDI versus second maker's eye? Leave your comments in the comment section below. I would like to hear from hear your input and any insight that comes along with it. This deck also begs for a steam hack, which is doable. Swapping ice cover for a single steam hack and a clot. The steam hack is required because it allows me to get strike out for a much cheaper cost. I was hovering on 15 to 20 credits for the most of the early game. And then when I hit that Ichi, I went all the way down to 5 credits and I stayed there for the rest of the game, which was pretty bad. Steam hack would alleviate that somewhat. Steam hack will also help in pumping study guide up immediately in case I run into an early toll booth or lotus field. Um, if you notice there was a turnpike as the outermost piece of ice on R&D for quite uh, the most of the end game, where he was on 6 agenda points, 4 to 6 agenda points. It was suboptimal, let's, say, let's put it that way. He spent 2 credits to install the ice as the outermost ice. He spent another 2 credits to res it. For 4 credits, he got an ice that tanks for 1 credit. Because I knew he was running astrobiotics, with no tank punishment, I could safely float tanks. And prepaid voice pad kit does not require resources. Well, it prevented me from using ice cover, but I was never going to use it anyway. So yeah, um, turnpike is suboptimal in astrobiotics. Um, I might... Even as a one-off, I think there are better eyes out there, such as Resistor. So, that's it for this video. I might play this deck again. I think it has potential to be at least a tier 2 deck. Needs some tweaking though, I'll get down to it. Again, I would like to hear your opinions, that could influence my deck building. In the meantime, thanks for watching and happy net running. I'll see you all around.